Well, good morning. Yeah, it's great to see all of you here this morning. It's been uh, a long time, but it's feeling great to see folks uh, being able to get out again, and uh, we're so thankful for that. It's a great blessing. It truly is. And I want to just share with you one thing that is on my heart this morning. Uh, a dear friend of the ministry, David Miller, passed away this uh, past week. And uh, what, a, what a great and faithful friend of the ministry he has been. Uh, Dave and Shirley have literally given hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars to the Christian school. And uh, partly in the helping to build this building and in other times at critical moments they have given just so generously to the ministry. Uh, I had the privilege a number of years ago to really uh, get to know David and Shirley and spent time with them and Sandy and I both have enjoyed uh, trips to New York where we have spent some time with them. It is a, it is a great loss personally and it is a great loss uh, to, our, to our ministry and we're so thankful that God has blessed us with being able to, to know this dear man. And I say all of that because there is a uh, committal service that is going to take place here. His service is being uh, shared in New York, but he is from this area. He came from Walnut Street, and he is going to be buried in the Jersey Shore Cemetery. So we are going to have a committal service on Wednesday uh, at noon. And I, I would really appreciate it. it. It's going to be in the chapel, the little chapel building that is there in the cemetery. And any of you that can come, there's no family left in the area that I'm aware of, but any of you that can come and would like to share in this time, I will be doing the service and uh, we would love to have a presence there just in honor of this, this great man who has been so faithful. And uh, we will miss him dearly. We will miss him dearly. So I would appreciate your prayers for Shirley. Her, her address is listed for us out at the uh, station out there at the greeter station. A card, a little note of thanks, just a, a prayer. These are things that would be greatly appreciated. She is in a personal care home. And uh, she's doing well. She has Parkinson's, and uh, uh, she's struggling through this, but uh, she also is a wonderful, wonderful lady. In some ways, they've been like, uh, well, since I've lost my parents, they were kind of a spiritual parents and uh, just uh, that kind of relationship that we've had. And uh, so we look, look to the Lord for his guidance on that, and we will be doing that on Wednesday. Well, this morning, I want to continue Last Sunday, we talked about the whole idea of how important it is for us to be exhibiting kindness and tenderness and having a, a forgiving spirit, and I want to continue on that. We're, we're in a time of unprecedented pressure and darkness upon our society. Our churches uh, are starting to rebound, thank God for that, but we, as I said last week, are also facing the the struggles that come along with uh, this disease and the culture in which we are finding ourselves, this is not an easy time. Uh, I find myself fighting anger uh, on different occasions. Something will happen, and I, I, I don't want to be an angry person. I don't want anger to be what drives me forward as a Christian. Uh, but it would be very easy to succumb to it. And I know, because I talk with you too. And... Uh, People say, well, that makes me so what? Uh, you better say it because I want to hear it. So that's right. That's right. We definitely are struggling against, well, stuff that we've never quite faced before. Some of it we've seen before. But I think as believers, it's super, super important for us to not allow ourselves to become boxed in by all of this. To not allow ourselves, you know, there's a tendency for us to want to just pull in. Just let me alone. I don't want to be bothered with all of this. And there's a tendency to allow things to suppress our natural desire to tell others about Jesus Christ. Man, we, we've got to be beyond that. This is not only an unprecedented time of darkness, but it is an unprecedented time, unprecedented time for us to 
experience ministry and all of its glorious ramifications. So I want to pursue this a little more this morning and challenge us about these three key areas of our life, our kindness, our tenderheartedness, and our forgiving spirit. Because these are kind of a, they're not kind of, they are a great part of the foundation of our lives as believers that makes us different, that enables us to respond differently to the world in which we find ourselves. I said last week that kindness is the outward expression of Christ inwardly. It's Christ in us and through us that gives us the possibility of responding to something in kindness instead of all of the other emotional things that normally crop up in our lives, huh? Anger, desire for revenge, or whatever it is. Kindness is the outward expression of Christ in our lives to others. The second thing is tenderhearted. And, and I've come to embrace that in my life as meaning my openness to others. My openness to others. And forgiving. Man, how important is that today? You might say, well, people don't deserve my forgiveness. Probably not. There's lots of people that do lots of things. And they're sometimes terrible things. And, and they have no reason to expect that they somehow deserve our forgiveness. But as we will see, that's not the standard by which we judge this. The standard is, even as Christ has forgiven, we are to forgive. And the last time I checked, I didn't deserve his forgiveness either. <laughs> Amen. Well, let's journey down this road a little further today. The word kindness, as it is found in our text, which, by the way, is in Ephesians. If you would open there with me, I'm sorry. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 32. And be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. The word kindness there, as a further understanding of its expression, means to be employed in a useful manner towards others. It's not a feeling as much as it is an action. It's an action that is designed to accomplish a good and useful purpose. If I have fallen down and you come over and help me up, you have expressed kindness. You see, you have done something very practical. You've done something very helpful. And you have done something that I would be grateful for. Not that I ever fall anymore. <laughs> you know, it's really irritating. When you go to the doctor now and they see your gray hair, what do they ask you? Well, have you fallen lately? <laughs> and then you ask yourself the question, am I going to lie? <laughs> do I really want this person to know that I have fallen? Are they going to send the... Somebody to wrap me up in a big blanket or something? I don't know. Ugh. Yes, I have fallen. And then I heard it already. How many times? <laughs> what, do I got to keep a journal? Just count the bruises. <laughs> you see, kindness is an action. As believers, what are we going to do? We can walk through this life with blinders on 
And we can let the darkness of the day in which we live cause us to have a kind of spiritual night blindness to what's going on around us. And we might say, that's not my job. That's not my business. I don't know who that is. And we can have this kind of night blindness that keeps us away from fulfilling the mandate of God. One of the great characteristics of a Christian is the kindness that exudes from their life. And it's not because they're just great people. It's because they know a great Savior. That's the difference. And man, oh man, if our world needs something today, it needs kindness. There is a coarseness. Maybe that's not the right word, although there's a lot of coarseness out there today. But it's as if people's tempers are right on the edge. And it doesn't take much to set people off. You know, and as a believer, I don't want that to be me. I don't want to be that person that gets all in somebody's face and becomes belligerent and yells and screams and does whatever it is and, you know, fights for my rights and you're vending. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I, I want to be that person that says, how can I help you? How can my energies, whatever they be, lift your burden in some manner and allow me to show what Christ has done for me for you. How are we going to get through this darkness? It's not going to be as believers, it should not be by, a, by going to violence and all of those things that the flesh wants to do. You know what? The greatest and most unmovable power in the world is Jesus Christ. And the greatest unmovable, the greatest expression of that power in our lives is when the love of Christ shows through us to a lost and dying world. And one of the ways he intends for that to be is through kindness. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12 and verse 10. Be kindly, affectioned, one to another with brotherly love, in honor, preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Be kindly affectioned, certainly within the household of faith. This has to be something that is on our hearts all of the time. I was so encouraged the other day, uh, and I know that we're all praying for Bob and Sue, and, and, and we're wanting to do anything that we can to help. And, and that's, that's one of the things I love about this church, is the, the level of commitment and the kindness that I see coming one to another. And... Uh, we, we heard through the grapevine that uh, they, they could use some woodcut. And man, a ton of guys showed up on Saturday with uh, chainsaws on Friday and splitting malls and stuff on Saturday. And uh, it wasn't very long until a, a tremendous amount of wood had been split. And, you know, that kind of thing may seem like something that is very, uh, you know, eh. well, let me tell you something. Those kind of acts of kindness, that kind of, of understanding the needs of others, that, that's where it happens. And that's how we, as children of God, not only can express our love for one another, but the last time I checked, even our enemies, we are challenged even to not treat our enemies in a disdainful manner. 
but to love those that despitefully use us. And I know we struggle with that, but kindness leads the way. In Galatians chapter 6, <clears throat> verses 9 and 10. Galatians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we therefore have opportunity, let us do good, notice this, unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Kindness. It is our action towards others. It is to be employed in a useful manner towards others. God has called us to let this be one of the leading ways in which our lives touch the lives of others around us. Colossians tells us to be fruitful in every good work. How in this closed-off world are we going to bridge the widening gap between us and even our neighbors? I think it's going to change. There's going to be an openness come eventually. Maybe some will think I'm optimistic, but I don't think people are going to stay shut down forever, nor should they be. But the, the challenge is, how, how are we as Christians going to get the message of Jesus Christ out there. Now, that's the challenge. And I believe that right here is one of the keys. Looking for those opportunities that God brings our way to get out of our comfort zone and show practical kindness to those that are around us. Be fruitful in every good work. Do good to all men, especially the household of faith. Kindness opens many hearts and lives to the gospel. It is one of those irresistible forces that God has given us that cannot be legislated out of existence. It cannot be made illegal. They may, they may make a lot of things illegal, they may try to make a lot of things illegal, but and as long as we're alive, we can be kind. And that kindness becomes a powerful, powerful witness of Christ in our lives. I think of how the, the kindness leads the way in places where Christianity is not even welcome. And, and I don't apologize for this, but I, I know I've spoken of her before, Miriam Sterling. What defines her success and what amazes me about her life isn't that she's this great organizer. She is good. <laughs> it's not that she has this forceful spirit that commands people's respect and attention. If you meet Miriam, she'll walk into a room and you'll not know she's there. She's got a quiet spirit. She's not an outwardly going or, or expressing person. She could be easily missed by most of the people of this world and never noticed whatsoever. But she is a powerful woman for the gospel of Jesus Christ because she has made it the absolute bottom line commitment of her life to love those that are unloved and to be kind to those who need so desperately someone to be kind. And you know what happens? This is the beautiful thing. Hearts become open to the gospel. That's the thing, folks. I, I, I have no means of breaking down the barriers that a person has in their heart. 
And Satan erects all kinds of barriers in people's hearts. Religion can be a barrier. Anger can be a barrier. There's all of these different things that people kind of cling to that separates them from the truth of Jesus Christ and the gospel. But I'm telling you, God has given you a hammer. And it is a hammer of love and kindness. And there's no wall that can stand against it. Oh, they will try, but they cannot. And if you and I are going to make it in this dark journey that we are on, I don't know what's going to happen in our culture. I, I, maybe I say I hope I don't know <laughs> what's going to happen in our culture. Because it could get a lot darker than it is. And the trend is not one for the expression of the light right now. So I have to make up in my mind, how am I going to respond to the anger and the, the, the various things that could rise up in a big time way in our culture? God has just put it in my heart. Do what you can do. Be kind. If someone falls down, pick them up. If someone, if you see a need and you can help it, help it. Be kind. That's one of the ways that we are going to go through this with God's blessing. The second is tenderheartedness. The word means to be compassionate, sympathetic, open to others. It's interesting that over and over again, many, many times in the New Testament, one example of that is, is in uh, Matthew 9, 36. It talks about how Jesus was moved with compassion. Compassion is my openness to what's around me. My ability to sympathize and to embrace what's happening in others' lives. To be compassionate and sympathetic. The dangers of the growing darkness is that it is producing a hardness in people's hearts. And listen, believers, that's not just happening in the world. There is a polarizing effect that the political changes are having, that the medical and uh, health changes are happening. All of this is acting to polarize people and galvanize people. And the problem with that is, as this galvanization settles into one's heart, Instead of being compassionate and open and sympathetic, we become withdrawn and hard and unmovable. In the prior verse of the one that we were sharing in Ephesians, it says, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Satan likes to produce or fan the flames of all of these things in our life, the bitterness, the wrath, the anger. He says, put that away. Let it go. Satan uses anger and frustration to get a foothold in our life. He gets his place in our life because he wants to shut us down and turn us off to others and what's happening around us. We would love it if we could build walls and all of us kind of move within those walls and find safety and fellowship and togetherness and all of those things. And in some ways, every time we get together here as God's people, we experience that. It's a beautiful place to be. It's a wonderful place to experience what God is doing in people's lives. We pray for each other. We care for each other. But the danger is that the emotions and feelings of the world creep into our hearts and, and we just want to say, forget it. Am I wrong? I'm not. And worse than that, we get angry and that can even be more damaging. I must confess, 
that when a lot of this stuff happens, I want to shut down. I, I, I battle this. I don't like conflict. How many of you like conflict? <laughs> I don't see any hands. I don't like conflict. I like people to like me. But I realize that if we stand for what is true and we stand for the truth of God's word, there are probably going to be people that are not going to like us. They're not going to like what we say. They're going to shut us down in the media. They're going to use every strength and power they have to silence our voice. And what will keep us from being silenced is what I'm talking about this morning. It is kindness and an openness of our hearts. Being a pastor presents a particular challenge in this area. I find it a very great challenge to not be isolated. It's interesting, God has a way of uh, changing that. Uh, this last big snowstorm that we had, the one neighbor who has been such a friend has always come down and plowed us out, called and, or texted and said, I can't come, my plow is broken. You know, we got like, psh, what, 17, 14, 17 inches of snow, something like that. And my, my deal with God has always been, well, Lord, I'm here till you plow me because <laughs> I can't shovel it. And it didn't happen. And I was really thinking, what's going on? And a day went by and it didn't happen. And so old preacher decides that he's going to take care of this in his own way instead of just knowing what I'm supposed to do. I get in my beater of a vehicle there that supposedly has, it, it, it has two and a half wheel drive. <laughs> when it feels like it. <laughs> But I thought, oh, bless God, I can get out of this driveway. I've been out through worse than this. And I revved it up and, and blasted my way out through the driveway, and I made it. I thought, hey, all right, now i got a pathway, and came back in, and then it snowed some more. <laughs> and we needed to leave and get out, and I said to Sandy, ah, I think we can make it. We'll just take the old Hyundai. And I got in the Hyundai, and I revved her up, man, and I... I'm going to get this out of here. And I took her off, and we kind of did that little, you know, how you pick up a little bit, and you get going down the driveway, and it's going well. And I look, and the snow plow's coming. And right at the end of our driveway is this little, uh, and I, I'm thinking, uh, I better slow down just a little bit. And that was it. Snow plow went by. In fact, he stopped. I could have went. He went on by. I thought, well, I'll just back up. So I backed up a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and then zzzz. All right, I'll go forward. Zzz, back up. Zzz, and the more I tried, the worse it got. And, I, and finally, I'm turned sideways and headed into the field, <laughs> off of the road completely. And I'm thinking, well, I guess I'm done. And I, I say all this to say, God's hell no. Now, now I'm ready to help. <laughs> I wish he'd told me that ahead of time. And a neighbor that I have had very little contact with, that I would like to have contact with, saw me struggling. And he came down. He has a plow and a four-wheel drive truck. And he plowed down to where I was, hooked onto me with a tow something or another, and pulled me up to the road. And he said, listen, I'll come back later. I have to go now. But he said, I'll plow you out. It broke down a wall there because I needed him. And sometimes that's the way it is. But there's other times when they need you. And the question is, is your, is your heart going to be open to that? That's how this gets done, folks. It's one heart to another. We need to pray that God will give us the spirit of Christ. That spirit of compassion caring. Jesus went about doing good, looking for opportunities to help, not for fame or fortune, but to further the cause of the kingdom of Christ. We can make a difference. You may not change the world. 
You may not ever be known by the world. But let me tell you something. If, if God uses you to introduce one person to the kingdom of Christ, you will have changed eternity for that person. But compassion. Compassion. I, I fear hard-heartedness today more than I fear almost anything else. Because hard-heartedness will gender an unhealable division and breakdown. I just want to be kind. I want to help when I can. I want to be open and tender-hearted to whatever God brings my way. There is a lamentable psalm, Psalm 142, 4, and you may have heard it or read it yourself. The great lament, I looked around and no man cared for my soul. You know how many people are there today? They're isolated. They're, they're alone. And we need to be open to this. Lastly, and I know our time is fleeting by, all of this, none of this, I should say, can function without the, the rest of this. And that is having a forgiving spirit. We are to forgive even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you, us, me. That kind of forgiveness was undeserved. It happened when we were the enemies of God. It happened when our hearts and spirits were in rebellion. That's the real description of when and how this happened. And so this kind of forgiveness is it's not something that is deserved, but something that we can give because we have received it. I don't know where I read it, but I read recently someone said, forgiveness is the most selfish thing you can do. <laughs> I like that. And I don't know who said it. But I thought it made sense. Why is it the most selfish thing you can do? Because you're the only one that can forgive. If you have been wronged, you're the only one who can loose that debt and free that debt and open that door for whatever God has in store. I've taught it. I've talked about it. Forgiving someone does not absolve them of their responsibility. It frees you of that burden. If you have time to look at Matthew 18, and you read the story of the steward, and the, the rich man forgave him his debt. He loosed him. That's the real issue of forgiveness, is when we release the debt that is owed to us. When somebody does you wrong, they incur a debt against you. Because what they did was wrong. And the only one that can release that debt is you. Forgiving. Oh, it's so important. Even as God has forgiven us. As we release the debt of others, we free ourselves from its chains and burdens and place upon them the opportunity to find in their own hearts and lives, the possibility of forgiveness. You see, for the person that is offended, the release comes in forgiving. For the person who has done the offense, the release comes from repentance. Quite a difference. But if we go around in our lives holding against others the grudges and hurts and hardness of an unforgiving spirit. We don't punish them so much as we punish ourselves. And I just see the darkness of our day having the potential in every one of our lives to create an unforgiving spirit, to generate a, a, a hardness, as I've spoken of, and a bitterness and, a, and an unwillingness to let go what others have done to us. There's been lots of wrong. <laughs> There's been lots of wrong. But I will not let it dominate my life. I will not. 
I must live my life with freedom and peace. And that only comes as I forgive even the unforgivable. As I forgive those that hate and who, who market their lives in these things, I, I can only just let it go and pray for their eternal souls. I want to make it through this time with the witness and testimony of Christ intact in my life. And I know that that cannot happen if I allow not the Spirit of Christ, but the Spirit of our age to just take hold of my life. And it wants to do that. But I must ask God for His gracious power to live in kindness, tenderness, and have a ready to forgive spirit. Because in that way, I remain pure in my opportunity to teach others about Jesus Christ. And we are called to that mission. Be kind, be tender, be forgiving. Let all that bitterness and wrath and anger be put away. In its place, bring in the Spirit of Christ and all that that means. Because my hope and prayer is that through this darkness, the light of Christ may shine through my life and through all of ours. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you so much for the fact that we've received all of this. Your kindness to us is beyond description. Your tenderheartedness towards us, Father, how, how much more of a definition of that can we have than that you sent your Son to be our Savior? To us as rebellious, undeserving, unloving, the very creatures you created in our sinful hearts in rebellious against God. And yet, Father, you loved us so much so that you sent your Son to be our Savior. And as we have been forgiven, Lord, help us to forgive. Because you've said that even there, if we hold those grudges, it hinders your ability to free us and to forgive us from the things that we struggle with. May the light of your presence shine greatly in this time to light the way through the darkness, not only for ourselves, but for those around us. And through the contacts that we have, may we have the opportunity to love and show the grace of Christ to all around us, that many may come to know the precious truth that we know of forgiveness and the love of God expressed in our hearts. We thank you, Father. We love you. We thank you for this time. We ask your blessings now. In Jesus Christ's most precious name, all God's people said, amen. amen. God bless you and have a great week.